Um, so B4, um, we're actually in our 15th year this year. Um, so we made it through 2020 and, and hopefully we're um, actually on the cusp of expanding B4 nationally. Um, so we've been in Oxfordshire for 15 years and we saw this as a perfect opportunity to actually expand rather than stay as we were. Uh, I mean, B, um, B4 was traditionally pre-March and we had a bi-monthly magazine that went out to 3,000 businesses in Oxfordshire and we ran regular face-to-face -face events, places like Blenheim, Rhodes House, the Ashmolean, and a lot of the colleges. But obviously that was all halted. And I honestly couldn't get into my head what a webinar was about um, this time last year, but now we've, we've run over 250 of them, um, including over a hundred in, in the space of three days in June. Ne Nexus was, was, was born pre-pandemic and it was just an opportunity for our members. So, so B4 is a collection of, of businesses of all sizes and from all sectors. Um, uh, a collective of members to, to work with each other and, and profile each other and, and promote um, work that they do together. And we felt that um, and working with people like yourselves and people like Grant Hayward and working with closely with Ben and Palace, the whole area of you know, businesses being responsible and purposeful, etc. The you know, the old phrase of CSR, corporate social responsibility. Um, it was important for us to provide opportunities for charities and social enterprises to actually be involved in, in B4. And we, we we created, Grant came up with a name, and Nexus means are coming together, and it seemed an appropriate word. So um, B4 members could appoint uh, a charity or a social enterprise to gain benefits of B4 membership at no cost, um, work with the other members in the B4 network and, and profile the work that they did with each other or they're doing with each other through our website and through the webinars, et cetera. So, and it's really come into its own in, in the last nine months with, with more partnerships striking up. I mean, in terms of businesses, obviously it depends which sector that business is in first and foremost. And we all know who the winners and losers are in, in business over the last nine months. But I think um, a lot of it also comes down to the mindset that the business leader, the, the individual leading that business, uh, we've, we've noticed um, just from out of offices that there's, there's a lot of businesses that have effectively Shut, shut up shop and that might be because of the to their in where they passed in hospital some business help maybe that you know the, the grants on offer and the furlough scheme were, were opportunities maybe to, to take a bit of a break maybe um, they weren't banking on on it being as long a break and, and that was something obviously none of us really knew but um, I think that the upshot of all of that is, you know, if you have been furloughed, for example, by a, a business owner for whatever reason, uh, in terms of the prosperity of individuals, I think that's, that's for some, it's been man from heaven and they, they've loved the opportunity to stay at home and, and be with the kids. And but I think we're now seeing employees coming back into businesses and where, interestingly, there have been employees that have been furloughed and those that have carried on. And I'm specifically referring to an example I've got in mind um, in the hospitality sector where one hotel had um, staff staying in work um, to look after key workers in the hotel and then furloughed staff came back into work. There was a real clash almost of mindset where those that had really worked non-stop during uh, the pandemic and during, during lockdown um, were really um, a completely different mindset to those that came back from a fairly relaxed past three or four months off and a bit of tension created as, as a result. So that's a difficult one for the business owners to manage. So I think um, a mindset of and health and well-being of, of, of employees is a massive area, a, a big issue for a lot of businesses that are, they're either managing really well or struggling to manage and cope with. There are businesses that, that definitely have, have had to close their doors, unfortunately, but I think um, recent stats have come out saying how many new businesses have started up as well. Those that have maybe been um, made redundant, have decided to change career and set up their new business. So I think, and a lot of people looking for a completely change in, in career and thinking you know, what I've been doing for the last 20 years really isn't fulfilling me anymore. Life is too short. I want to do something that I've always wanted to do, now it's the opportunity to do it. So uh, there's certainly winners and losers, as I said from the outset. You might have, have had a lot of businesses that traditionally were really supportive of local, uh, the local communities and charities, but they just can't. Their, their, their focus has, has been on survival, really. So I think um, 
it really depends again who the business is. I mean, looking for examples, I mean, I, I had a, a few conversations with B4 members prior to this uh, webinar today. Um, one of our clients, um, uh, Explosive Learning Solutions, historically did an awful lot of work at uh, litter picking at Glastonbury Festival, Poppy Day Appeal and uh, for the Royal British Legion. And that work's continued um, during COVID. One of the owners at, um, at Harwell, they're based, set up the Harwell Helpers, uh, a mutual aid group for the village of Harwell. That's got a, a, around 100 helpers and has been involved in a multitude of tasks from shopping to prescription runs and friendly calls. Um, the, the business themselves have delivered flowers and meals on wheels, made face masks and scrub bags, as well as visors and clips. Um, which have been um, straight into, delivered straight into the local NHS. Um, and more recently, they turned uh, to a recycle and refurbish service, ensuring all the children in the village had computers for homeschooling. Um, and now um, Kath uh, Convery, one of the directors, takes a day off a week to continue to support coordination of these initiatives and has supported the logistics for the vaccination scheme in Didcot. Um, and on top of all of that, they've also helped with fundraising events um, for children in need to pass donations to the local food bank. So I, I just want to use that one example. There's, there's, there's plenty and, and those on the call today will have been involved in, supported or initiated a lot of fantastic initiatives. But I, I just think that ELS maybe um, encompasses a lot of, lot of the good things that have happened in, um, from businesses over the past, uh, past year. There will have been businesses that would have always done this. And we talk about Kath at ELS that would have continued to have done this. There will be those that have done it in the past, supported local initiatives, but have been, because of the pressures on their business, not been able to. And that must have been incredibly frustrating for them. But I think there'll also be that, that, that third group that maybe wasn't that inclined to support the local communities and charities that have not necessarily been forced to, but have maybe been carried away with you know, things like support for the NHS and the clapping and got carried away on the crest of that wave felt good about it and thought actually this is good for me for my own mindset for my own well-being it's good for the business to be involved in these sorts of initiatives and i think hopefully they will replace those that can no longer do it because as i said the pressures on their businesses and hopefully we'll end up with a at least the same amount of organizations being able to support their local uh, communities as, as they were before and hopefully that will continue as businesses start to recover and repair the damage that has been done to them over the over the course of the next six, 12, 18, five years, you know, it's gonna, months and years, it's gonna take a lot of time to recover, but hopefully the mindset has shifted significantly to one of support and collaboration and looking after those less fortunate than, than a lot of us. And let's face it, you know, a lot of us have, have got away relatively unscathed. A lot of groups on this call today would have, you know, would have been at the, at the coal face and seen, seen the real harsh realities and impacts of COVID. Uh, and I think it's it's down to all of us to really uh, work together going forward to help each other uh, recover as best as possible.